Hello, and welcome to SciShow Breaking News. This week, earthworms are doing nanotechnology for us. Americans will soon be eating genetically engineered salmon. The Russians are going back to space, the same space which could apparently damage your brain. Oh, and another reason to drink less soda. Ah yes, Coca-Cola and the continuing high fructose corn syrup debate. Of course, this is important because suddenly the developed world's most significant health threat is overeating, and it turns out fructose is really good at getting eaten. Not only is fructose tasty, it's the stuff that makes fruit sweet and it's full of the energy our monkey cells need to survive, but according to a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, when you consume fructose, your brain doesn't notice that you're being fed. Now this isn't a super easy study to do since it relies on people regularly getting brain scans after consuming a sugary beverage, either sweetened with glucose or with fructose. So the sample size was fairly small, but the correlations were strong. Consuming Consuming glucose registered with the brain as consuming calories, while consuming fructose registers significantly less. Of course, high fructose corn syrup isn't the only source of fructose, it's in healthy alternatives like agave nectar and fruit juice as well. So probably your best bet is just consume less sugary things. But sugar is natural. Indeed, every molecule of sugar you've ever eaten was produced by a living thing in some manner or another. We can make glucose in the lab from CO2 using some fancy, complicated, and expensive organic chemistry, but why would we? There's sugar in pretty much every living thing, and it's abundant in a ton of cheap crops. But unfortunately for us, there aren't any cadmium telluride flowers or fruits in the world out there creating complicated nanoparticles for us to extract for our use. Cadmium telluride quantum dots are fluorescent nanoparticles used in medical imaging and are superior to other medical dyes. But of course, since they're currently made in laboratories through complicated techniques, they are expensive. Well, last week, scientists published a paper in Nature Nanotechnology outlining that earthworms already have within them the chemistry necessary to convert cadmium and tellurium salts into luminescent quantum dots. Earthworms can do this because cadmium and tellurium are toxic heavy metals, and for earthworms, dealing with heavy metals is a daily hazard, so they have specific biological pathways designed for handling them. Those detoxification pathways convert biologically available cadmium and tellurium salts into quantum dots, which were then harvested yeah, the worms had to die, and used in live cell imaging. It's easy to forget that nature is just way better than us at a lot of stuff still. Engineered yeasts and viruses have previously been created to make fancy, expensive, super advanced nanomaterials as well. Speaking of genetic engineering, the salmon on your plate may soon have some significant genetic differences from natural salmon. In order to increase salmon farm yields, a company called Aqua Bounty has created a new kind of salmon that grows twice as fast as Atlantic salmon, but tastes the same. Two genes were added. One one from the Pacific salmon to help the Atlantic salmon grow faster, and one from an eel to encourage the salmon to grow year-round. The FDA will likely not require a separate label on the fish, so if you want to avoid genetically engineered food, either don't live in the United States, or stick to wild salmon, the harvesting which of course has its own impacts to consider. While the health impacts of genetically engineered food remains a topic for debate, we know one thing is definitely bad for you outer space. The conditions that astronauts are exposed to in their travels in outer space are known to increase the risk of cancer and cause loss of bone density and cataracts, but research done at the University of Rochester Medical Center indicates that exposure to cosmic radiation could also increase space travelers' risk of Alzheimer's disease. The concern is a specific sort of radiation, high-energy, high-mass particles, not your everyday radiation. This stuff comes not from the sun, but from exploding stars. And there have been enough supernova in the galaxy that a trip to Mars would result in a significant dose. These particles are moving so fast that they'd fly right through the hull of a spaceship. A strain of mice that were designed to be susceptible to a disease analogous to Alzheimer's were subjected to this crazy form of radiation and developed the disease significantly more frequently than a control group. But that's not going to keep us out of space, you guys. Never. Indeed, the Russian government just pledged to increase space science by roughly tripling their current space exploration budget to $7 billion per year for the next seven years. Dmitry Medvedev said that this recommitment will enable our country country to effectively participate in forward-looking projects such as the International Space Station, the study of the Moon, Mars, and other celestial bodies in the solar system. He said it in Russian. Though, let it be known that Russia's space budget, even under this new initiative,
initiative is still less than half of what the U.S. currently spends. Still, I'd love to see the U.S. increasing exploration and science budgets in these crazy difficult times any amount at all, let alone triple current levels. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow News. If you want to keep up to date with all the latest breaking news and science, you can go to youtube.com slash scishow and subscribe. Thank you